Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen, and I thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. You can get a free 31-page PDF, great study guide, quick summary, review of the top 200 drugs, uh, clinical practice pearls, as well as things that show up on board exams a lot. Uh, Same thing if you're in pharmacy school, med school, nursing school, and taking pharmacology, uh, you're going to see a lot of the information there uh, potentially uh, show up on pharmacology exams throughout your career too. So again, based on my experience, things I've seen in practice, as well as uh, thoughts from uh, others in uh, academia as well. So go check that out, subscribe. Uh, get that absolutely for free, reallifepharmacology.com. We also give you updates as to when we have new podcasts and content uh, episodes available there as well. So uh, go do that at reallifepharmacology.com. And with that, let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is sumatriptan. Uh, primary brand name you're going to hear in clinical practice is Imitrex. Uh, I definitely see this medication used periodically. Uh, By far, uh, the most common situation I see it used for is acute migraine treatment. With that said, I have seen it used for cluster headaches as well. Uh, If you remember in cluster headaches, uh, oxygen is an important treatment, um, but I have seen triptans used uh, in combination, uh, specifically sumatriptan, used in combination for uh, relieving some of the symptoms of cluster headache as well. Mechanistically, uh, this is classified as a triptan, and it is a serotonin agonist, and specifically as an agonist at the 5-HT1B and 1D receptors. And primarily what's going to result from this and what's likely theorized to be the benefit is vasoconstriction and reduction of inflammation which could obviously uh, make headaches worse. Uh, That vasodilation has been uh, thought to cause uh, headache pain or be associated with that. With that said, it's a lot of theories. Uh, In the uh, migraine world, the brain is a complicated structure, and so I I don't think it's 100% figured out exactly how a migraine happens, why a migraine happens, what causes a migraine. Uh, there, there's a lot to learn still, um, but the, the theory is there that um, vasoconstriction from these drugs and reduction of inflammation may help manage uh, that migraine and abort a migraine or reduce the, the pain and severity there. I, I did want to mention uh, triptans generally aren't used first in migraine therapy unless it's kind of more moderate to severe. Uh, For those milder cases, we're going to generally use simple analgesics like acetaminophen and NSAIDs. And as those don't work or as the progression of of migraine gets more severe, then we start to lean into the uh, triptans. Uh, Other important things I think to to pay attention to, we generally want to avoid using uh, no more than... uh, nine doses per month kind of that magic number is 10 is probably easier to remember so less than 10 uh, days per month we want to use abortive therapy Um, these drugs maybe more so other drugs um, can cause rebound headaches or excuse me medication uh, overuse headaches where we use too too much of the medication and then the headache uh, remains and, and continues to linger and, and potentially even get worse in some situations. So again, we, we don't want to use abortive uh, short-term acute migraine treatment on a chronic basis because that's going to potentially lead uh, to more problems uh, than it does good there. Uh, dosing of sumatriptan, 50 to 100 milligrams, and we can repeat that dose uh, two hours or later Uh, if the patient is still struggling with migraine symptoms. So uh, generally a a max of 200 milligrams per day, and depending upon the patient, they're going to use a 50 milligram dose or 100 milligram dose. Pharmacokinetics is important. There are multiple dosage forms of sumatriptan. Uh, We've got oral, we've got nasal, we've got uh, sub-Q. So this is going to be selected based upon pretty much what the patient 
likes and what's beneficial to them. And also ease of administration, of course. So a, a good example of a patient that you, you might avoid the oral route is a patient that has a lot of nausea and vomiting associated with their migraine. If they're vomiting, they're throwing that pill right back up, they're not going to get the dose and they're not going to get the relief. Um, with that said, if somebody has nausea and vomiting, you might lean on more nasal administration or sub Q administration. Okay. Uh, I did want to mention pharmacokinetics and this generally holds true. Um, I think for, for any medication and, and any medication administration, orals generally going to be slower. Uh, nasal is a little bit quicker and sub Q and obviously IV is the fastest route of administration for a medication. So specifically with sumatriptan, oral uh, is approximately 30 minutes for the onset. Nasal's 15 to 30 minutes in that ballpark. Uh, Sub-Q is, is 10 minute onset approximately. All right, let's talk about adverse effects. So first thing I want you to think of is vasoconstriction. So that's one of the key characteristics in potential benefit in using a drug like sumatriptan in migraine treatment. But vasoconstriction is generally not a good thing when it comes to other vessels. And particularly, you think of uh, the heart and brain and situations like that. Vasoconstriction is a bad, bad thing and can lead to heart attacks and strokes and things like that. And indeed, that is a potential concern with the use of triptans. Now, younger patients at low uh, cardiovascular risk, we typically aren't going to worry about that as much. Now, if you've got a patient with multiple uh, heart attack history, stroke history, TIA history, this is a concern and probably a situation where we're going to avoid triptans and they are contraindicated in situations like that according to the package insert. So really got to look at cardiovascular risks uh, if you, you know, are, are struggling to uh, kind of gauge that assessment and what other options we have for migraine treatment, that type of thing, it, it may help to get uh, cardiology involved and see what their take is on their cardiovascular risk. Um, but again, if you see that patient history, you see them on um, antiplatelet agents, anticoagulant type agents uh, for prevention of strokes, uh, preventions of heart attack, things like that. Uh, that that is a concern with triptans that it may increase that risk. Another thing, cardiovascular wise, cardiac wise, I guess, uh, QT prolongation. Um, so there has been risk associated with using the triptans in uh, prolonging that QT interval. So if you've got a patient at baseline that's already at risk uh, due to other risk factors, and if you go back to the amiodarone podcast, I talk about a lot of those risks. Uh, that may increase the risk for QP, QT prolongation. Um, definitely go go check that out. But uh, triptans like sumatriptan can uh, cause that issue or potentially make a, a cardiovascular event uh, more probable there. Uh, other adverse effects, uh, dizziness, drowsiness, um, you know, those are kind of more nuisance things in, in general. Uh, and then we've got to remember the serotonin action agonist action. So serotonin syndrome is a consideration there as well. And then if you think about each of those individual uh, dosage forms, uh, so local irritation, injection site reactions, things like that can happen obviously with the sub-Q. Uh, nasal discomfort, nasal irritation can happen with the nasal uh, dosage form. Uh, GI upset can happen, maybe more so with the, the oral administration there. So uh, again, all those adverse effects kind of go along with the way we're giving uh, that drug. All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, BCACP, BCMTMS, the geriatric certification, NAPLEX exam, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, if you're a nurse, dietitian, med student, physician, nurse practitioner, PA. We've got all sorts of books, uh, audible books as well, meded101.com slash store. Uh, latest and greatest has been Perils of Polypharmacy. 
a lot of people liked it. I've been getting a lot of good reviews on that book. Um, a lot of experiences from my practice in primarily geriatrics and polypharmacy, reducing meds. I talk about strategies there, uh, as well as the prescribing cascade. A lot of common examples there. So again, go check that out, Perils of Polypharmacy. It's on Amazon. Um, but yeah, all those links you're going to find at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. And as I finish up on drug interactions, I want to, of course, uh, mention my two books. I've got a, a food drug interaction book uh, that you can find at meded101.com slash store. Uh, and I've got a common uh, drug interactions in primary care book as well. And they've, they've both been, been fairly highly rated. I've been fortunate to uh, have a lot of people enjoy and, and I think benefit from those books. So again, go check those out, meded101.com slash store. Okay, so getting into our drug interactions, uh, there aren't a ton of drug interactions with triptans uh, as far as, you know, thinking about like enzymes like CYP2D6 or 3A4, that type of thing. Usually that's not terribly concerning uh, with sumatriptan, but uh, there definitely are a few to consider. And the two primary things are uh, MAOIs, which again, aren't used terribly often. They're an older uh, school agent that can be used for refractory depression. Um, but certainly we have some serotonin risks and things like that with that class. And then the other serotonergic agents, we can have some additive effects. So SSRIs, TCAs, uh, tramadol, SNRIs, uh, these can all uh, potentially increase the role of serotonin in the brain and increase the risk for serotonin syndrome. Okay, and, and so when I think about these uh, type of drug interactions, I think about that cumulative effect. So if I've got a patient on, uh, let's say, an SNRI like duloxetine, 30 milligrams, am I really worried about serotonin syndrome if a patient takes a triptan a couple times a month? Uh, no, probably not. Okay. Um, now, do I have a patient on a, a TCA and maybe they're taking tramadol and they're higher dosages and now we're taking more, more and more frequent sumatriptan use? Uh, that's a situation where it probably should be coming a little bit more into focus and we maybe should uh, think about that a little bit further. So again, serotonin syndrome is extremely, extremely rare. I've only seen a couple of cases in uh, 10 plus years of practice. Um, but it is, you know, relatively serious as well. So uh, it's important to think about, but, you know, in general, you want to look at the dosages, look at the medications they're on, how frequently they're taking it, um, and really kind of do that risk assessment. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. Leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Greatly appreciated um, for those of you that have already done that. Uh, it helps us grow this podcast. Another way to help grow this podcast is shoot a friend an email uh, with the, the podcast link uh, URL or, or reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, help them get better at medication management, medication safety, uh, and just learning pharmacology in general. So again, rating and review on iTunes and sharing it via email or whatever else you want to do so, social media. Uh, that has been greatly appreciative and it has grown the podcast uh, far beyond anything uh, I have ever imagined. Uh, if you want to help keep this podcast free, go to real life, uh, excuse me, go to meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Your purchases there go to directly to support uh, this podcast. If you want to track me down, suggestions, comments, questions about study materials, anything like that, um, mededucation101 at gmail.com, or you can track me down, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCGP, BCPS on LinkedIn. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, take care. Hope you have a great rest of your day.